Okay, now we're going to come back and we're going to tie in trigonometry in the complex plane in one of the most beautiful and elegant equations that most mathematicians have ever seen. I don't know if, if regular people get all mushy about this, but we do. Uh, Euler's formula, this is e to the i theta equals cosine theta plus i sine theta. You'll notice we're into the complex plane here. And remember, we said that cosine of zero is one and sine of, of zero is zero. So that's the first quadrant. Think about what's going to happen if we go 180 degrees this way or pi degrees this way. Uh, what is e to the i pi? Well, this is cosine pi plus i sine pi. And this is why you kind of want to have a feel for the first quadrant and the axes, which aren't technically part of the first quadrant. Because if you move anything around, you can kind of see how it should go. So I hope everybody can see that this is going to be negative 1. So this is e to the i pi is equal to negative 1. And this will be 0. So adding 1 to both sides, uh, we have this. And I guess I'll put this up here. So e to the i pi plus 1 is equal to 0. This is the jaw-dropping formula that you will find so many math grad students with uh, tattooed. Um, and uh, no, I'm just totally serious about this. I, I don't actually have this one tattooed on I me. Mean, I, I think it was because I didn't have the money at the time. Here's why. E, transcendental number. It shows up in natural logarithms, uh, logarithmic spirals. It's the mystery. It shows up in so many places. Pi, everything associated with a circle. Pi is showing up somewhere in a bunch of weird places, too, that you wouldn't suspect. I, imaginary number. One, the first integer, the first unit, and zero. Um, these are like the five uh, beautiful numbers that tie all of these things in together that are so, so cool. And it has a lot of power. When you do fast Fourier transforms later on, you're going to be using stuff like this. Let's see how this is related to the complex plane. Uh, suppose you have this, z equals x plus uh, iy, right? So here's some complex number. And for the sake of it, I'll just draw it in the first quadrant to make it easy to look at. Uh, so here is, so here's this point. So this is uh, x plus iy. And typically, as I said before briefly, we haven't done vectors yet, but we're going to. And the complex plane was made to think about in terms of vectors. So we have this. Uh, here is the x. And incidentally, so this is the yi axis. Because we're in a complex plane, here's the x axis. Here's some angle theta, right? So and this would be yi. Now, um, and this, of course, uh, this. So what is this length right here? Uh, this is going to be uh, the radius of this, whatever this is, right? And we already know that it is, uh, if it's, you're going to have to normalize it because it's got the yi, but this is the norm of x plus yi, right? And we'll talk more about that, so don't, don't let that flip you out too much. I just want to try and tie these together so you can see how pretty this is. So think about uh, what we have here. Um, so in general, cosine theta is going to be what? x divided by r. And the sine of theta is going to be uh, y divided by r. We're going to leave the i off here. It doesn't really, uh, we're, we don't need this to be in the complex plane yet. You'll see how this ties over. Um, that means that r times cosine theta is equal to x, and r times sine theta is equal to y. And the reason why I left the i out of this right now is because whether you're in the complex plane or the regular plane, this is always true. And these are going to come back again. We're going to want this. Uh, we're going to want to be familiar with this. So think about it. Um, how would you uh, talk about this? How, how would you write z using this? Right? Well, let's think about something. First, what is this length? It's the norm. Uh, the norm of x plus yi, or iy. Uh, you can do it either way. And I did it both ways, which is probably driving you nuts. This is going to be the square root of x squared 
plus y squared. And I showed you why last time. It's the modulus of this, right? And um, so, and this is r, right? This is just r. If, you're, if this is bugging you all of a sudden, don't worry about it. We'll talk more about this. Um, so think about this. You could write this. What would this equal for this angle theta? What is r e to the i theta actually equal? Well, it's going to be r times cosine theta plus i sine theta. This is r cosine theta plus i times r sine theta. This is x plus i, r sine theta is y. And this is, in fact, z. So you can code up uh, the complex numbers with this very nicely. And this is going to have some really profound impacts on our ability to compute things like the roots of unity. And we will be back one more time for this.